This is the Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Let's go nuts! It's Jimmy Nuts! Five out of the door! With your host, Mark Martinez. Because I'm the Mark and I'm awesome! The Guru. Today I'm going to break it down for all you simpleton sweat hogs listening out there in Can Crusher Nation. I don't mean to come out here week after week and toot my own horn, but toot, toot. And the English Professor. It is I, the English Professor from the County of Kings, speaking the English of the Queen. Hey, this is former WWE superstar Duke, the Dumpster Drossy, and you are listening to the Can Crushers Podcast. And we're back! Yep, after a two-week hiatus, Mark the Mark is back. I've been the problem, but I'm also the solution. In the studio with me is the glorious guru, Chad, and in the humble abode... Of the English professor's lair is the English professor already making exorbitant amount of noises. You know, if we're gonna, I, I do, just dropped the mic. If, if literally, we're, if we're gonna do this, I'm back or we're back type thing. We got to do it properly. We don't own the rights to this, by the way. No, no. So. Uh, Thank you, Eric Bischoff, the one good thing you gave to pro wrestling. Uh, by the way, folks, this is a drinking episode. Chad has a bottle of rum. I have a, they say it's 32 ounce, but it, it looks a little bit bigger than 32 ounces, of Andy Shandy from the Brew Bank here in Ridgeway, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's a lemonade, blueberry type of beer. It's delicious. I have another one in the fridge along with a 30-pack of Miller Lite. So, that ought to get you to at least the first hour. I also have Maker's Mark, but the wife told me not tonight. What's this story? Well, we'll get there. Huh. We'll, we'll get there. Uh, English professor, what are you drinking? I still have some of that um, that stuff they make in Boston. Tea? Should I say? Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Tea. Oh, Port, <laughs> oh, all right, Port Rocker. Okay, I was going to say, uh, we, we've recorded, we have talked to each other since... We have not seen each other with the fantasy events, but this is actually the first shit show that we're going to have in two weeks. So, are you going to do impressions tonight? If the spirit moves me, I don't know. We'll see. Well, hopefully you have a couple drinks. Porch Rockers from Boston. Pretty good. <laughs> not as good as your mom, so. Uh, like my mom's Boston impression? No, my your mom's impression. The, the your impression of yeah, your mom. Of my, no, your impression of my mom is spot on. Yeah. So, yep, here we go. <laughs> what have you guys been up to for two weeks? Because we literally didn't talk about any of that. We just did the fantasy show. Boom. We didn't say what's up or you guys didn't hear my story from last week. You guys did hear the, the story, if you listen to the podcast, of recapping the Keith Miller Memorial Invitational and uh, Ballpark Brawl. That was great. Had some beers with those guys. Finished up the last two Sundays ago doing the youth minor league, youth um, tournament. So that's why the first week we couldn't do it. Rain caused some havoc there. The second week was planned that we were going to have to finagle things around because it was my yearly camping trip with my father and we've added Kelly's dad, uh, mother, and soon to be, you know, stepfather, um, to the mix. We went out Friday. I might as well just go now, and you guys can come. We went out Friday, and I, I, I had a thirty pack with us, but I also wanted something else because I worked Friday, and I just wanted to get ripped and ripped hard Friday night. So we finally get out there like five thirty, and. I don't know, I've been watching a lot of TikTok and watching people drink this vodka pinnacle whip stuff. I did. I bought three bottles of Mountain Dew, the new flavors of Mountain Dew that are out there. Punch and watermelon. It's a and pretty good, that punch is pretty uh-huh, good. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. The punch was delicious. So I would mix 
I, a healthy amount of vodka and a little bit of Mountain Dew. And a bottle of vodka was disintegrated in two hours. Holy shit. By just you? Just me. Holy fuck. And I went to bed. Just like that. Boom. Your bed. Your tent. Well, we, we stayed in Vicky and Randy's trailer with them because they have a big uh, bedroom and we just slept on the couch. Apparently, I made it to the, 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 uh, the trailer okay, but as soon as I sat down, I mumbled something and then just passed out sitting up and Kelly told my poor mother-in-law and future father-in-law, stepfather-in-law, Oh, he's fine. Just push him over. He'll go to sleep. And that she did. Saturday, I woke up. Felt like... What time Saturday? Like 8 o'clock. I actually cooked. 8 p.m.? No. No, no, no. Oh. In the morning. And this was me going to bed at like 1, I think it was. Um, woke up. I cooked breakfast for us on my dad's, uh, that black stone grill that he has, which is amazing. Um... I then took a nap because I had a full belly. I did some podcast stuff out there on their horrible Wi-Fi. Uh, then I started drinking beers with them and jumped right back on the horse. It was uh, Saturday. was an It was an early night though. It was only eleven o'clock. And then we got up and then got up Sunday and left. You didn't puke at all from drinking that much vodka. Not at all. Damn, Damn that's that. insane. I can't believe your body didn't reject it. Why? It was and it was Mountain Dew. So I worked that day. So I had already been up from you know four o'clock in the morning until like one, just ready to go. Not oh, at all. Shit. Not at all. And I'm telling you, hour and a half, two hours. That bottle was. See you later. They've been out there since like noon, getting a little bit of a buzz on. So I just figured I need to catch up. That I did. Holy cow. Hey, when I go, I go. Yeah, I'll say. I'm not the one that rips apart New York City's bathrooms and makes them look like the war zone. That was rough, yeah. So so what you're saying is you were better than Chris LaRusso passing out, <laughs> but not as good as Jack Pollock. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're somewhere in between there. Yeah, because I, we were at least off the air, so to speak, before I passed out. Like, everybody else was in bed. Chris LaRusso just passed the hell out on air. That was amazing. <laughs> so you're saying you did Jack Pollock proud. I, He'd be yeah, proud okay. I should have. I should have. So. Nice. It was, it, was a, it was a good time. Oh, by the way, we're watching ICW Pit Fighter 19. Um... On independent wrestling, and this is already unbelievable. They're inside a uh, octagon. There's t- chairs and doors, and this is going to be bloody here in a little bit in studio. Yeah, and this is a. I, I hate to keep complimenting it. Um, I mean, it's a backyard type thing going on, but uh, the octagon looks really fucking good. It's it's not like something that you know we would put together. We would put together with chicken fence and you know, whatever kind of tables we could get out of Walmart's dumpster or something. Or dumpsters around town. Yeah. Because I know a guy. In the garbage business. Yeah. Yeah. So, let's start with the English professor. So you can have a couple more drinks of your uh, strong. I can smell it over here. (laughs) What did you do the last couple weeks? I also did a lot of interviews, by the way. How about keeping ourselves uh, still relevant? No weekly shows, but I had so many spotlights in the hopper. Pretty awesome, huh? Yeah, that was good planning. Um, I had a lot of baseball games, whether it was my son's team or my team. Um, We wrapped up on my birthday on the 18th, which, by the way, that was... um, I know you don't like to cross shows, right? But that was the Crockett Cup. Right? That was our Crockett right. Cup episode. Right. Yeah. And we didn't yeah. wish you happy birthday. I wish you happy That's birthday right. silently. Yeah, of course. Yeah, thank you. But we didn't on the show, so happy right. two-week belated birthday. Thank you. 
Um, we had a game that night under the lights. That was a lot of fun. The game under the lights is so much fun. And then they kind of threw together a last minute thing with all the T-ball teams, but a lot of people didn't show up because it's been two weeks and they just kind of threw it on us earlier in the week. And I had to round up as many of my kids as I could. Only two of them showed up, but they made like kind of an all-star team with whoever showed up and played a couple innings and that was it. And then they all got certificates for ice cream. And literally, just before you hit the button to come on the air, you know, you texted me and said, hey, we're ready to go. I just walked in the door because the kids that didn't show up still got ice cream certificates. And I asked the guy that runs the uh, organization, I said, look, if they didn't come, they don't get ice cream, right? He goes, no, everybody gets ice cream. I said, well, how are we getting to him? And he said, well, you know, I guess I'll, and I said, uh, at least give me my team's stuff for the kids that didn't come. Uh, and I'll deliver them. And one couple, they were so nice. I was literally at their house for about two hours. We were talking, had a beer, um, how much their kid loved baseball. So that, that was that was nice. That that, that means a lot. It warmed my heart. Yeah, it really did. It really so did. you have two high notes in for this year. Right? Yeah. Um, the first one was when we went to IWC, you told me about a kid that told the rest of his team, shut up, yeah. Coach Giannis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he put his finger to his mouth and, and shushed this other kid who was, yeah, acting up. And then this, yeah. So, yeah, it, it was it, it made it worth it. Again, I know earlier in the season on this show, I called them animals. Uh, you know... This game that we just had yesterday, and I'll be very brief about this. There's a, again, we did it on the big kids' field. There's a table, like a, a park bench, like on I-80 when you stop at the rest stop. Those benches and and uh, made out of concrete. Then, well, no, they're made out of wood. But I don't even know why it's there. It's go ahead. Sometimes on I-80 they made out of yeah. concrete, so you can't steal them. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but there's just one like <laughs> next to the dugout. You think little kids are not gonna? Climb on that and jump on it and dance on it. The one coach is like, hey, bud, no. That kid didn't give a shit. And I'm out on the field. I'm like, that kid has however much time until I'm fed up to get off the table. And then he starts, like, jumping on He's a big boy. And just from the field, I yelled. Because then other kids are getting involved. I yelled, yo, off the table. And they scurried like uncovered ants. Back into the dugout. Wow. You, ha- Listen, you have to. You have to. I love children. I really, really do. And I feel like they sometimes need to, to hear that because, hey, bud, just wasn't cutting. He no. was still dancing on the table. No. I, I, I had the same thing kind of happen as I was umpiring the last two games. One game was, you know – the red team's last game, and the next game was the orange team's last game. And the coaches brought coolers full of stuff to drink and everything because it was hotter than the depths of hell. So they're behind the dugout just doing a Pee Wee Herman dance on top of coolers, running amok. One coach doesn't even know that he's supposed to be coaching kids. He's just, yeah, I'm there watching the kids play some baseball. He, he doesn't care. I'm like... Hey, dude, you should probably get your kids under control. Then they start yelling at me because I'm the umpire. Come on, Mark. That was a ball. That was a strike. I'm like, Holy minor shit. league baseball kids should not be yelling about what's a ball and a strike. You know, I'd have thrown those little crotch goblins out. I'd, every <laughs> one of them. I would have pointed at them. You, you, and you. Out. I didn't throw anybody out there. Damn it. I didn't. Uh, a lot of them are moving up next year to the major leagues. Um, and if they ask me those same two coaches, the umpire, I will. Because I like those kids. I like to see them, how they're going to progress. But what about your John Rocker pitcher? <laughs> yeah. He... <laughs> yeah, he's going to be gone. Um, but next year, everything's going to get a little more tougher. Uh, the strike zone's going to be... A little tighter. I don't want to hear, you know, the assistant coaches. Come on, that's some minor league baseball. If they don't learn, if they don't learn the strike zone, I, I should have just gunned everybody out. And John says it nicer. 
there's some kids that shouldn't be playing. Maybe this is the year you figure it out. Chad, how was your two weeks? Well, now, uh, I've been, it's been boring. I've been fishing, doing a lot of hiking, um, getting ready for my moose hunt. Hello, buddy. Hi, Max. Max is in, in rare form tonight. Um, it's just been kind of a boring, low-key two weeks. Put a couple of pulls in, um, just taking it easy. I, I have not quite as funny, and some people might not find it funny, but I don't care. Um, is you guys' baseball story, but it reminded me, John talking about the table, when my little boy had his kindergarten graduation a couple of weeks ago, we go into the cafeteria at the middle school, and, uh, well, what we think is was the middle school. Right, it's the elementary, elementary school, school now. now. And uh, they had bleachers up. I just started shaking my head, and Sue looked at me, and she was like, what? I said, some shit's going to happen. I said, I don't know who. I pray it's not Vinny doing something, but something's going to happen. Sure as shit, first group of kids, first class, gets up there, and this one kid, I'll just say he was large for his age. Um, They get up, and... They had like three rows worth of kids in this class. They get up on the top row of the bleachers. And I'm like, I looked at Sue. She's like, don't even say it. Just waiting, waiting. Sure as shit, this kid starts assing off, dancing. And, okay, I hate when people do that dabbing shit. It reminds me of, uh, what's that little bastard? Uh, played for Cam Newton. Played for the uh, Carolina Panthers. Now New England Patriot. And he did that. He started doing that shit that he, the year that they ended up playing Denver in the Super Bowl. And then when Denver kicked the ever-loving piss out of him, I loved it. But Did you dab that night? No. Oh. No, I did the mile-high fucking salute that <laughs> night. Um, but anyway, this kid does a dab and falls straight the fuck off of the back of the bleachers. Oh. I know how and this is. This is. This is. You know when you fall or you stumble and you don't expect it. How fucking awesome it is. I mean, it's bad, but it's awesome for the people watching you. Well, this kid falls off the back, and I'm like, the, the, Sue. The Sue goes one. like this. She's like an arm length away from me, and she goes and puts her hand over my mouth, and I'm like, Is the kid okay? Is the kid okay? Well, the kid gets up, and he's okay, and they, then they make him sit down. It was at that point that I started fucking giggling. The rest of the <laughs> the rest of the night, you just had to giggle. I, I, was, I was giggling at that, and then Vinny's up there. And I didn't know this, and I, I think this is rude of one parent to do this to another. But Sue told Vinny, don't pay attention to your dad. Oh, Whatever you do. ignorant. <laughs> and I'm like, this is fucking rude. So my thing the whole time Vinny was up there was to try to crack him up. And I'll say, I got to give it to him. I did not make him bust out laughing. But I had him smiling. He refused to look at me. I mean, I'm doing the thumb on the nose. I'm doing the fucking deer antlers. Doing the, you know, like I'm smelling my armpit type thing. And he's watching me the whole time. <laughs> When he walks, when he walks up the little aisle, like they do graduating or whatever, they're walking up. They're walking up two by two. Yeah. He wouldn't even look at me. He comes back after it's all over. He was like, "Dad, really? You're an asshole." He was like, "It's a good thing Mom told me not to laugh at you." Nice. Mom was right. Mom, Mom, was, Mom right. was right. This, I still think that's rude of her to say that though. That is rude. I mean, You're a parent, too. Yeah, and if anybody's going to make a spectacle of my kid... A testicle of your kid. It's going to be me. Right. Huh. So, let's not lie. I think we guys took a little bit of time off of wrestling, too. The first week of not having a show, I didn't watch a lick of wrestling. A lick. You didn't miss a fucking thing. 
John didn't miss. Yeah. John didn't watch anything either. I think. No, I didn't. I still never watched either of the pay per views, the NXT one or the In Your House one. I heard that they were the same thing. You mean? Well, I know not the NXT. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, NXT In Your House and um, Hell in a Cell. Hell in a Cell. Thank you. Yeah. I watched the NXT one. I like that one. Yeah. I have no desire to watch the Hell in a Cell one. There was only one thing that was worthwhile in the Hell in a Cell, um, and that was Bailey in uh, Bianca Bianca Belair. Very brutal match. And I'm when I say for a women's match, I'm not degrading. I'm just saying for a women's match, Hell in a Cell, that was a good fucking match. That was the only thing. And guess what? It was the first fucking match on the card. So there was no other reason to watch from it. That, from that point after, it was constant fucking piss and shit breaks for two and a half hours. There was there was nothing. The only Bobby Lashley winning, I was mildly surprised on. Um, and like I, th- I think I told you, I said the only, thing, only other thing besides the Bianca match was they went away from conventional um, endings to the matches. And a couple of them were just fucking roll ups out of nowhere for a pin. That was that Lashley was Lashley one, right? That was Lashley and um, Sami Zayn and KO. KO. That was the only things that were good about that pay per view. Um, speaking of Bobby Lashley, Lashley is not what pisses me off, but it reminds me of something that just grates my nerves. And that is, and this is not this is not to tell you guys what to do or what not to do. It's not to get political. But it's total bullshit when they say, you know, get vaccinated so you can come back and see us. It's just all so phony. Stephanie's like, I can't wait. For, I, I have the impressions. I can't yes! wait to yeah. see you all at the arena. And Bella 1 and 2 are like, I can't wait to travel. And JBL's, I can't wait to go to the game. What he's really saying is, I have a gun to my head, and they're making me say this. John, so, go ahead, could you do me a favor? I want you to do the Stephanie one again, but I want you to pinch your nose. I think it'll be more realistic. Come on, you got to get more of the nasal. you got to pinch your nose and do it. I can't wait to see everyone at the arenas. The only thing that I have seen... Come on, Johnny, what are you doing? The only thing that I've seen fucking wrinkle its nose more than Stephanie is a fucking rabbit. It, yeah. It's so corporate and bullshit. None of those guys, none of them, the ladies, they're not believable. But you mentioned Bobby Lashley. The only person who just stands there and says what he's, what the lines are and makes you believe it is Bobby Lashley. It's just like, hey, guys, come on. Let's all, we're in this together. Let's all do the right thing. But everybody else is like, oh, I can't work. Such bullshit. How many Such have you had? Bullshit. How many did you have at the at the kids? A couple. Because <laughs> yeah. you're you're wild now. They're hitting yeah. you. And you're wild. It, it loosens me up. Yeah. And regardless, you know, there, there's no statement on all of us what you believe, don't believe with the virus and stuff like that. It's it's your own personal choice. But of all fucking things, all sports, to have it done, the Vince McMahon kiss my ass club WWE and having those, especially his fucking daughter, out there talking about that stuff. I agree with John. It was like Lashley. I was like, I can respect him because he he had that look. He had that, you know, almost like he's tilting his fucking eyes up in the air, roll, you know, rolling his eyes because he's out here doing it, because he's forced to. Fucking everybody else was just like, they're just like zombies. The only thing I think they've ever done worse than that is, I don't know, they're general promos that are scripted for them, and they do. They, they, it just was such a sellout segment. They all sold out. And the only one who doesn't look like a sellout to me is Bobby Lashley. He just seemed sincere and genuine. Everyone else just looked like, they're making me say this because times are tough and we need your money. Even my son, he's 11 years old, and he said, 
I feel like they're just saying this because they want to make money again. I'm like, well, yeah, they're not telling us. They're telling us, like, we can't wait to see at the matches and, you know. Well, this Monday is the the last Thunderdome, right, for yep. Raw. and Well, this whole week is the last Thunderdome, right? Yes. And then they go on the road for, well, I don't know, I think they're going to Dallas first or whatever. Yeah, but they got that whole, that that whole territory week, down there is all... I open. think Texas and Oklahoma. Yeah, because Money in the Bank's at Houston. So that would make sense that they're going right there first for the week. But, all right, so uh, that's essentially what we did the last two weeks. I thought that was going to be longer. I really did. We yeah. really have boring lives then. I we, guess. Yeah. We, miss, we missed two Sundays. One was for baseball because of me, and the other one was, was kind of planned. Uh, we were going to release it. But baseball didn't say anything. Um, I got drunk, and yeah, that was it. Crawford's now in the podcast too. Good. Yep, yep. There she is. She's desperate to get outside and kill a bird or something. Is that the wall cat? Yes. Ah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Doing it. So you let her out of her prison, you know, <laughs> every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> the only other thing I will say that I didn't, you know. You kind of, for some odd fucking reason, reminded me of it. Is I discovered the world of audiobooks in the last week or so. Oh. Um, what audiobooks? I, I know, I know what they are. Um, I just was like, I got these things in from uh, a couple of different companies that I'd order ordered stuff from uh, on Amazon. Did you order from Columbia? One cent, you get nine CDs? No, that was like back in 96, you could I, do that. I know. <laughs> I ordered, I, I was over in Germany and still had one of those. Went to my whole shop and, hey, I get this order or whatever. We ordered like 250 fucking CDs. For $2.50. It was like whatever the thing was, one for, you know, 99 whatever. cents. and Yeah, we ordered like 250 CDs off of that shit. They actually, after that order, blocked my fucking account. Of course they did. So, but anyway, um, audiobooks. And first one that kind of drew me, of course, was just a easy listening, a, a camp stories one from hunting season. Um, it was a uh, one from Wisconsin, but another one that caught me and I'm really into, and I, I was surprised because it's done in his own voice and it's very monotone was J.R.'s second book, Man Under the Black Hat. Oh, wow. That was his best-selling. <clears throat> well, the first one the first was one. Slobberknocker. Yeah. And it's the it. second one, I kind of thought, uh, it. I listened to the preview, and it's in his voice, and I'm like thinking, this is going to be really hard to listen to, just because it's a monotone, flat voice and everything. Actually really good. Um, made it to the point of where his wife had her accident um, and she passed away and holy hell, um, people can say I'm crazy or whatever. Or it's not possible. They do anyway, but um, you could hear the strain and emotion in that man's voice talking about his wife and then talking about the first wrestling related event that he went to afterwards, which was a, um, a Q and a, and I couldn't tell you where it was, but it had, uh, sting was there and, oh, who the hell else? Um, I think Paul Orndorff was there or something, but he said the one thing that really stood out about him was, is he walked out and everybody stood up and was, you know, a low but respectful clap for him. And when he went to say something, he broke down. And Sting come out, gave him a hug, and he's like, you could, you could, he's like, it's just, it's okay, buddy. He said, we're here for you. And Sting sat there the whole time with him. That he was off the, he was off, uh, what do you call it? The clock. Off the clock, yeah. I was thinking off the pay. Um, but he sat there, and they had like a two-and-a-half-hour Q&A 
where the fans just let him talk about whatever he wanted. There was two questions asked the whole time, and the fans just let him go. And That's you're talking crazy. 200 and some people just let him go and let him talk about everything wrestling. Um, of course, where Jan fit in from early days to immediate, um, talking about her car. She has some classic car that's like 30, 30 some years old, uh, worth like seventy, eighty thousand dollars I can't, I'm sorry, I can't remember what it is. Um, and he's like, I'm not going to sell it. He said, I'll probably be buried in that son of a bitch. Just a real good, real good book, but just something to look at. There's a lot of the wrestlers books that are, uh, coming on there and so relatively you subscribe cheap. to this now or something or they have different subscriptions you can the one that i did uh, it's it's cheap it's like uh i don't know like ten dollars a month and i get a a free audiobook any book uh one a month and then the other ones are from 20 to 60 percent discounted the most expensive one that i've found is 17.95 so it's it's just one of those things. I like I have problems with my vision, so I can't sit there and read a lot as much as I'd like to. So I'll sit there at night and it's kinda of like my calming down, wind down thing, and I'll listen to the book, have, you know, the earbuds on or something like that. And it's just really cool. And I don't know, it's just something I've been doing that with a lot of podcasts. Not even wrestling podcasts or anything. Just I've tapped out of music for a little bit because I, I don't know why. Everything's... I love old music. I love new music. I'm just... You ever get time that you just don't want to listen to music? Either one of you? It, it's just sure. like, I just... I don't want music today. So, I'll find a podcast about dogs. And I'm like, oh, okay. Top five dogs in Ridgeway or something. I don't listen to that. Wow. It's fascinating stuff. Yeah. <laughs> You've got two of them right in your house. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Chad's got the other three. Four. Go. You just four, started on four. This show. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, there's a, there's a three whole and a half of... hour. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just, there's so much out there in this subject. You know, whatever your likes are, uh, not that I would listen to it, but there's like uh, ones about chess masters and history. One I listened to, and it was, I wanted to listen to the truth on this versus a series. R-Truth. Not our truth. That's. I, I won't use that mm-hmm. word. It begins with an R. Um, this one was on the, and John could appreciate this, the history of Queen Elizabeth, Queen Mary, and Mary. The, the Scotland, English, France thrones and stuff like that. Yes, I'm ignoring him, people, because Mark's an asshole. But this one was, it was actually a really good listen, and Holy fuck, you know, I think we're fucked up these days and people are fucked up these days. Hell no. Those people back then, they'd slit their brother's fucking throat just because they felt, oh my God, they're next in line. They could have me overthrown. Like, holy shit. I'm telling you guys, it is, in my opinion, a misconception that, oh, the world's going to shit, this and that. People have said that for thousands of years we're in a better place now we have our problems absolutely but as a society of human beings we're in a better place now than we ever have been and if you don't agree you can't go back to where we were anyway so you might as well enjoy it oh mr philanthropy right there <laughs> philosopher Philosopher. Philosopher. Damn, philanthropy is something else yeah. is it philanthropy when I you don't dig know. up fucking I, bones or shit no now, philanthropy is like – has to do with money. Like, you know, you you found a, a library in your name or something. Uh, digging up bones, that's archaeology. What the hell is wrong with you guys? I didn't say it. I just said philanthropy. Well, Maxie Impaler is um, – well, Max from OVW, by the way. She is in this now uh, taking on – some huge man. Huge. It looks like... Oh, a... shit. First, that ain't a man. No, Max back there is. Oh. There I thought you were talking about that thing that looked like Kong. Like, awesome Kong. Philanthropy is a desire to promote the welfare of others. 
as in donations to good causes. Yeah. So, so you, I was like, way the fuck off, but uh, I mean, at least I made an attempt. Mark was. I just a word came into my head, and that's what I said. All right, we're gonna get back on this podcast. Uh, oh, here we go. What? No, just very quick. I've been watching, and this is kind of wrestling related. I've watched every game of the European Cup. I'm not a huge, huge soccer fan, but this has been an incredible tournament. But I think if they incorporated, so they have a lot of selling of injuries, which is great. Um, but I think they could incorporate some more wrestling into this. So like when Spain was playing Switzerland, how cool would it have been if the Italians jumped on the field and got the Spanish and the Swiss disqualified. Or like how Mr. Perfect pulled Brutus Beefcake and Rick Martell out of the ring and got them both counted out. So Mr. Perfect shot right to the finals. Jump in and like start throwing guys off the court. They get counted out. Boom. You're automatically in the finals. More people would watch it. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. All right. We'll wrap up this first segment um, because this is the past two weeks. And then we'll talk about, in the next segment, we'll talk about wrestling that happened um, this past week to get us back on wrestling. But I want to ask you guys, what was your favorite um, spotlight that I unleashed over the last two weeks? We had the Just Incredible one. We had Rene Dupree. We had the recap of the where I was the baseball tournament, Keith Miller Invitational. And then we had the most recent, um, Carmen Chaos. Who wants to go first? Go ahead, John. I enjoyed Just Incredible. I mean, I, I liked them all, but I appreciated uh, his straightforwardness. Um, you know, talking about not pulling any punches about how he feels about certain people and, and you know, the money and that it, it wasn't maybe what we fans thought it was. You know, it wasn't a great lifestyle. They weren't making a ton of money. And, you know, why that was, why that was different than just 10 years earlier when guys were making, geez, you know, seven to 10,000 a week, sometimes more. Um, I thought that was a really good interview. I'd have to go along lines of John as far as just incredible because he was honest. Um, you know, the two things that strike me about him and, I don't know that they're both good. One's kind of funny. But uh, the whole looking, the Aldo Montoya jockstrap over his head thing, that's just fucking, that's classic bad Vince shit there. Um, just shows how a good wrestler can be ruined. Yep. Um, I loved his shit in ECW. Uh, yeah, he had the violent stuff and everything like that. But he was probably one of the top two or three that actually incorporated wrestling into his stuff. Um, and Jerry this, Lynn would be number one, probably. And then the second one was, um, oh, he, they call a Angelique now. What was he before? Gory. Gory. Um, I think back of the incident two years ago with Gory and credible at another independent where credible was drunk or high or both. I think it come to be. And he fucking plastered gory and ripped his head open multiple yeah. staples, multiple stitches, but he was just, he, he was honest about the business and some guys can handle it. Some guys, you know, can handle it. And unfortunately, after their fame is up, um, they decide to take the wrong path. But he was he was open and honest. He just didn't he didn't give a shit. He was honest about everything. Yeah, these guys are making oh, they, they promote like everybody's making all this money. Well, no, these days the motherfuckers that are on top are the ones that are making all the money. And even back then the guys on top were the ones making the big money. The other guys were making, uh, I'll just say like a uh, subsistence money. Yeah. Um, you know, enough to travel, enough to eat, enough to maybe help out at home, and not a whole hell of a lot after that. And you see that, look at a lot of the wrestlers 
that are old, say old now, you know, 60s, 70s, whatever, look at where they're at. Um, God, I think of uh, Kamala before he passed away, Vader before he passed away. Um, they, I want to say, pissed their money away, but they really didn't piss it away. They kind of snorted it away. But he was at least honest about that shit. And you get, people won't do that. A lot of wrestlers won't do that because they think, okay, maybe we're not going to get a push at 60 years old, but maybe we'll get a, a cushy job with one of these big companies or with, you know, WWE. He doesn't give a shit. No. Uh, I did like I did like the credible one. Um, I'm going to swing it around, and I'm going to say the last one I did uh, with Carmen Chaos was very educational. Um, being a transgender woman wrestler was uh, hearing her her fights and her obstacles um, to get into wrestling and the way her life was. Uh, that one hit. That one hit because the three of us are good-looking men, and, you know, we we have everything, and we're, we're good to go, where she was battling from the age of four in a family that was drug-ridden, and it changed her life and, and everything. It's, it's a great, it's a great one. We also have some fun poking the bear about some other wrestling and stuff and everything, but um, it was an educational one for me, so I, you know, do you guys want good-looking? Oh, hell yeah. I think we're good looking. Yeah. Yeah. I think we are too. I just, yeah, I didn't know you thought that too. Yeah. Would you guys mind if I'd say something on that subject? About being good looking? Well, no, I know that, but, uh-huh. and I know we are that. That goes without fucking saying. That's like saying, hey, do you know Jock Sampson's a fat bastard? <laughs> yeah, we fucking know that. It's obvious. The, this goes across the board because it's been, uh, uh, a news-worthy item, which, uh, how can I put this nicely? Fuck the news outlets on, in a general meaning. Um, but the transgender athletes in that, regardless of what you think of them, it's their life. Let them, let them live it the way they want to live it. Until it affects you personally, and by affects you personally, I don't fucking mean you disagree with it. Right. Yeah, it makes you angry. Or you don't, you know, you're... Let me rethink before I say what I was going to... Regardless of what your beliefs are, and what people should or shouldn't be, if it's not affecting you, if it's not hurting you, Honestly, people, it's none of your fucking business. Let them do what they want to do. There's people that don't like us. You know, fat people. There's people that don't like bald people. Well, I'm fucked. Right there's two things of me right there. Um, Whatever, people. Let them, let them live their own life. Yep. You know, that's, that's all it is to it. You don't have to agree with it. You don't have to love it. But at the same token... Respect their choices. Number one, down. All right. So when we come back, we will uh, we'll talk about this past week in professional wrestling. It'll probably be quick as well because it was okay. But we have to say something first about collar and elbow, John. What do you want to say about collar and elbow? They are makers of really great, comfortable wrestling gear, including hats, hoodies, T-shirts, eye patches, uh, pants, um, vests. vests, yeah, masks, all of it. It's great stuff. Uh, great designs, awesome comfort level. Yeah. Chad, we have a promo code. Can Crushers. All one word, capital C and can, capital C and Crushers. And when you use that promo code, you'll save 10%, uh, which is essentially shipping or handling, whatever one. Like, Well, shipping and handling is the same thing. Wow. Uh, shipping or parking, as we say. So if you're going someplace, uh, they'll pay for your parking, essentially. Nonetheless, here comes Al Snow, because I messed that up. So here comes Al Snow, and we'll be back to talk about this past week in professional wrestling, because now we are a wrestling podcast again, because we're back. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. 
the wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. Hi, this is Bulk Nasty, and you're listening to uh, Can Crushers Podcast. Uh, I'm not sure, just two guys cornered me, so um, here you go. Welcome back, Can Crushers listeners. It is I, the English professor, joined by Chad the Glorious Guru and our host, Mark the Mark Martinez. We've got dogs, we've got cats. Uh, Miggy and Max are, um, you can hear the tails thumping in the background. We've got Crawford tearing up paper. Um, they're in the wrestling spirit, too, clearly. Everybody's pumped. We're back. Yeah. It's amazing when we take off two weekly shows, but still continue to put product out there. I think this, they like the weekly shows, and that's why the guys are going crazy tonight. Guys and girls, because Crawford's a girl. Yeah, yeah, she is. Yeah. And just to clarify, Crawford is John's cat that lives in the wall. Right. Um, um, so for that was probably about what seven months ago now, right? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He finally got her out of the wall. You know, feeding her on a more regular basis. She's not having to go for her own food and chase down the mice and everything like that. So, yeah, yeah. I'm trying. It's you're being a good dad. Thanks. You really are. <laughs> wrestling this week. It is wrestling this week. Um. Wow. Well, I mean. There were shows happened. that purported to be wrestling this week. It happened. So it's like we didn't take any time off, essentially, on the WWF <laughs> yeah. E aspect. If, yeah. If we were going to be busy, I guess now would be the time to have been busy. Um, Charlotte, one thing I'll mention, got into that brawl with, um, I guess, Rhea Ripley. First of all, what the hell is she wearing lately, Charlotte? But what I really wanted to mention was... Booty shorts, I think. Cra- yeah, but even then she wore, I think maybe it was the following week, it was all one color, like it was tights and a shirt that matched her tights. It was all, I don't know. So in this two weeks, we have switched roles as well. Yeah. You're going to be the fashion police of the show now for the next couple months. I hated what she was wearing. It but was when she got to that ball. With... Go ahead. Go ahead, Jeff. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I, I can't remember the colors of the outfit. I just remember it was bad. Yeah, it it just looked like some of the shit that maybe Naomi or um, Sasha Banks wore, like a cross between those. It was just bad. I mean, Sasha Banks looks good in ninety percent of what she wears, but I think the one time she wore leopard everything from fucking neck down, and she looked did not look good in that. Did not compliment her. But let's talk Which, about Charlotte. Yeah. Yeah, she's got her dad's crazy face. Like, when she was on the outside of the ring, I think, like, maybe her lip was bleeding and her eyes were bugging out. The forehead, the bugging out eyes, and, like, the, obviously the schnoz, um, but the mouth, too, like, that that just deranged, um, biting face she makes. Rick has strong features, and I think, I don't know the mothers of his children, but it looks like... You don't His know kids them? Really take it. You I don't, don't. I don't know them. Oh. The only one I ever remember seeing was when he beat Harley Race in a steel cage. His wife at the time, number whatever, came jumping into his arms after the match. Right. The only and one I remember was Beth. She was the one before the current one. Fifi. Is Fifi his current wife still? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I remember Beth, but I don't think they had... They didn't have any kids. I don't think so either. I think it was his first and second wife. They were split between, what, four? Four kids? Five, I thought. Isn't there I three? Five, there's two. three girls yeah, and two boys, right? Okay, yeah, I couldn't correct. remember. Yeah. 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 
So that's what so you wanted to say about Charlotte? Uh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, the, the brawl with um, Rhea. With Rhea Ripley, and yeah, that's a good program. It, it's. Is it? Yeah. Um, oh, see, you're, you're in a Charlotte fan that you went. Eh. I, I will jump on this bandwagon, John, here for a second, and Chad's going to backhand me. Maybe it's not Charlotte. I don't know if Ripley's ready to be carrying everything. She had her shot. She ran with it for a while. Okay. And here in uh, a couple weeks, we're going to see what fans actually think. This whole yeah. COVID era is going to be over. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'm all right if they do a complete reset. And I'm all right with that because they need it. They really do. Um, I think yeah. you're going to see some titles change hands at Money in the Bank. All the champions are extremely heavy favored to retain. But I, I agree with what you're saying. I think they're going to do kind of a reset with Charlotte and... Um, Bailey. Bailey. Not Bailey. I don't think Bianca retains. I mean, we're two weeks away from Money in the Bank. And we'll, I think we'll Bianca retains. I think they're pushing her enough, and I think she goes through this one. Um, the one thing, John, I, I wanted to bring this up because we had a discussion offline about this a couple of days ago, I believe, about Charlotte. Um, you know, Dave Meltzer making remarks about women have to look a certain way or they don't. You know, they're not pushed real far. They don't get, you know, a long, long life in wrestling and Charlotte jumping on his shit about that, which, okay, kind of agreed with her a little bit. And then what the, what did Charlotte go and do? And, John, you said that somebody was watching. A uh, wife, yeah. yeah. And made a comment. I, you go ahead with this part of it. Well, that she just couldn't even recognize her. You know, I don't know. She doesn't watch it every single week. I know, Mark, you think she's the biggest fan. But when she does tune in, the last couple of times, you know, you watch it all the time and maybe you don't notice, but the last couple of times she has not recognized Charlotte Flair. And she thinks she's probably gotten work done each of the last times, you know, in between each of the last times she's seen her. Yeah. All right, let's break down uh, Raw. Real quick, anything that stands out in the last couple weeks. Guys, I like the Nikki Cross almost a superhero thing. I really do. Chad's putting his head down in just disappointment. I don't... There needs to be something funny going on on there. Because nothing else is good. She's at least comic on Raw right now. Getting some roll-up wins or whatever... You guys are both against me, aren't you? No. I I can't stand it. I know at least she's trying and but you know, they still push that R Truth bullshit. I don't know who the hell was he talking to in the back. It just went on way too long. I didn't even write that so down in my dumb. notes, actually. I really didn't. I don't know. I don't want to be a hypocrite and say, like, you know, we push the indies when they have like dinosaurs and monkeys and stuff, but then we crap on this, but Come on, man. She was part of Sanity, and now she's relegated to... She used to be psychotic. Like, her intro music was just started screaming like a banshee. And now, you know, somehow she's a superhero. I Almost. The thing is, Almost a superhero. I don't get what's going on. Here's the thing with WWE in general. The writers are not 100% in on just about anything. Anything. Miz gets eaten by zombies. I'm no doing way. I'm doing this for a point, and you're both gonna shit on me as soon as I say it. So go ahead. Okay. But just why is she suddenly this? When did this happen? What occurred in her life? That's what I don't get. It just looks like shit, they're paying me to do this. Chad, do you have anything to say before I bring up the reason why I brought this up? I'm with John. I, I don't like this. When you do something like this, the only time that comes to mind right away that I liked 
was uh, Hurricane. In Rosie. In Rosie. That was funny, but at the same token, both of them son of a bitches could move in a ring and wrestle in ring. Nikki Cross can, but it's just like, this has Vince's testicles all over it. Jizz all over it. All right, you got to take it to the next level. I, it's just this is this is bad. In our truth, oh my! I I see how far he has fallen. When I go back to TNA and see some of his matches, then see matches that he had against an early AJ Styles, and it's like how the mighty have fallen. Okay. So, when we did our fantasy show for next week, um, we ended with this, and Lana's not wrong. She has said this, and we all shit on Lana. We do. She said that they just don't know how to end storylines, so they just drop them and throw something else at you. She's not wrong. They hundred percent right. They don't know what they're doing, and no matter what, there, a million podcasts are out there saying the same thing. There's never a wrap up of a storyline. Right now, we have Riddle and Randy. You know, Riddle just fought this past week for Randy to be in the Money in the Bank, and he didn't get to be in it. But don't you think Randy? Between us three, Randy should be pissed off that Riddle fought for him and lost. Right? To start some dissension between those two, right? Sure. What do you think is going to happen? Nothing. They're going to win the Tag Team Championships in like two weeks. And in three months, lose them to Kai and Ty. And this segment that they just did is going to have no relevancy... <laughs> Are Kai and, and Ty members even alive yet? I don't know, but you know what I meant. Uh, like, there's not, there's not going to be any. This was a, this was 25 minutes of Raw this week, of Riddle fighting for Randy. Oh, I need to do this. He tried to bring in his inner Randy. This and he lost. And something should be done about this. This needs to go one of two ways. I'll just say Chuck and Billy. One way, which I don't ever see happen. Or I want to see Randy Orton beat the ever-loving shit out of Riddle. Shove that fucking scooter right up his... Anus? Anus. Um... I just want to see Randy Orton just decimate. And I'm not an overly large Randy Orton fan, but he's fucking good. And he's been good for a long time. I just want to see him beat the ever-loving shit out of Riddle. You talked about Lana just circling back to her. Um, I guess somebody that is in the business has the right to comment on things. Uh, more than you or I or whatever and you know anybody that's not been in the rings so to speak is a competitor but from somebody who accepts a name ring name that's spelled backwards is anal and knows it her fucking credibility is lower uh. than my credit rating after my divorce it's fucking under 200 on a scale of 900. So, that's it. We we didn't touch on... Um, we were... All three of us kind of liked Piper Nevin when she came and she was in the very first uh, May Young Classic and she did some great stuff over in the UK and now she's Dewdrop. And this whole... Apparently, from what I've read, that Eva Marie's really never going to have a full wrestling match. Her, not that she did in the first place. Um, she is there to continue to bring people in and, and do whatever. Chad's holding his mouth, so I, John, you have to let him go because he's going to blow up. 
Oh my what god! Yeah, go for it. Eva Marie. Think, what do we think about Dewdrop? First of all, and wait, then, wait. Let me let me. The easier thing. Eva Marie couldn't wrestle her way out of a wet, ripped paper bag back however many fucking years ago when she was in the first time. Now she's got the sable look to her. All of her enhancements are drooping, and, you know, she's overly tanned like Hulk Hogan in 84. Um, so the wrestling part of it, that's out the fucking window. So now we have, we take a larger woman wrestler. Now I'm not, not degrading her. She's obviously bigger than Sasha Banks, who is talented and has shown her talent and you name her Dewdrop. So now we have John Morrison, who's... What the fuck is his name? Johnny Drip Drop. We, so we have Drip Drip D Dewdrop. What the fuck? Are we just going to put this shit on Pornhub next? I mean, you got the fucking names. And I don't mean to be rude. I, I don't mean to be rude in that, but it, this, is, this is fucking stupid. John, do you have anything to say? I, I, I agree. I agree. So let me bring up somebody that John is hugely a fan of. And oh, how the mighty have fallen. Allison K? No. Asuka. Losing matches to yeah. this. Uh, many women out there that I interview and talk to, they say, hey, you know, no matter what, they might like. Brit or Diana or any of the other women that are um, even the NXT uh, Dakota uh, are all somebody that you remember, but they're like the WWE has got the best women's <sighs> roster. Do they? Do they? Because look at besides the horse women, okay? We uh, Bailey Charlotte. Becky, when she comes back, Sasha, tier one. Who is tier two? <clears throat> I'm saying in the main brand, because I know, John, you are EO above all. You used, She's awesome. Yeah, she's awesome. You used to be Asuka as well, but... But they it, don't really give Asuka a chance to shine anymore. Like, that's what I'm I, saying. Yeah. And all those other women you mentioned, they're kind of becoming... They're so top tier that maybe they don't work as often, or they're they're. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't need what, belts. Uh, they're yeah, they're exactly. they're at the yeah. Cena, the Randy Orton, the you yeah. know they don't need belts anymore. What are they doing for new blood? Really, new women's blood in the WWE. Um, bringing back Selena Vega and making her look like. An idiot right away. Not to change subjects. But no, but yeah. Yeah, no, you're, oh, you're, we're covering. A, uh, we'll just we're now in the mix of Raw and SmackDown. This so. week, this week we might as well lump everything together, except for maybe talking about AEW. Yeah, on the side. Uh, oh, do they have the best women's roster? Yes, I, I unequivocally yes they do, but what do they do with it? They we have a long day. I I don't I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't I don't know how to put it. Other you know you let's let's go back to Oscar. Undefeated in NXT, the only undefeated champion, male, female, tag team, singles, anything, anything. Undefeated, retires a belt, brings her up. First mistake they made with her was having her lose to Charlotte Flair, in my opinion. They should have pushed her more. Since then, she's nothing but a screaming fucking maniac. And this shows the... Hmm, dare I say, racist views of Vince McMahon on how he views certain ethnic people. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And and she she's just lost everything. There's no credibility. But then they'll fucking do something like this week and next week that little bastard Michael Cole, you know, who has 
his nose so far up Vince's ass, you can't tell where one ends and the other begins. He'll be saying, oh, look what, you know, so-and-so's doing to Asuka, and she was the NXT champion and retired that way. No, you can't fucking reference back. When you after you her. beat, after you beat, buried, dug up, beat, and buried again. And that's what they've done. That's what they do with the talent. That's why nobody, that's why Aleister Black never wanted to fucking go to the main roster. Yeah. You brought up, let's say the women a little bit, because you brought up, it was now more than a year ago that you saw Liv Morgan probably put on the match of her year and say college. Yeah. Um, absolutely. She and doesn't get what that opportunity. Are, what do they go back to? Her and, um, well, I'll just stick with her. Mandy Rose if they would let her and put her in with the right opponent, I think she could look a lot better, but she's still not a title holder in my eyes. But Liv Morgan, what the fuck are you doing with her? Why is she not on top? She looks good. She can wrestle. I swear, guys, I would, and you can laugh at this, I would give up wrestling and hunting if I had that tape of that match that she had and showed it to you guys and you were not like, holy fuck, that's a four-star better match. And it was a great fucking match. But they don't. Why? She doesn't have the name. And, John, I'm not picking when I say this because I know you like Charlotte. She doesn't have the Flair name. And if Charlotte Flair doesn't, if nobody thinks that Charlotte Flair doesn't, fucking run off of the Flair name. They're full of shit. She can't even have her own fucking intro music without ripping off her dad. You gotta get the new blood in there. You The the old guys, you know Charlotte's that good. You know Sasha's that good. You know Bailey's that good. Bring these others up. It's not saying take the, take the old out of the title hunt. It's saying you gotta build these guys up. And I'll I'll say this again, and I'll, I'll you know till the day that I die, where Vince totally lost his fucking mind. In my view, was when he said wins and losses don't count. Nobody takes a fucking thing seriously after that in the wrestling. When you get buried and buried and buried. Get your ass kicked by everybody and their mother, whether it's good guys, you know, good wrestlers or bad ones, and then you try to push them. Yep. Nobody takes it seriously. When's the last time Roman Reigns had a match that you thought, hmm, holy fuck, he may lose this match? Name it. What, can you do it? Can either of you two do it? No. Uh, no. And it's it. that's like with everybody else. Okay, they're bringing uh, Rhea Ripley up, giving her a good push. Jeez, didn't they do this before and stomp the piss out of her, brought her up a second time, yep. stomp the piss out of her, and now they're bringing her up and we're supposed to take her seriously? I don't care who you, who you put her against. I, I know. There's no investment in it. And there's and I'm going to say my final piece on all the, the women's stuff, and then we can transition to some of the men's things on the WWE that we hate as well. Um... I'm ready for Sonya to be back in the ring. Sonya needs to be back in the ring because I think she's a legitimate somebody that can cause flair and all. If we're going to do the story right, line right, which is it, maybe it'll happen when the fans are back, maybe it won't, but Sonya's a legit competitor that we're like, oh man, yeah, we can get behind. I Listen to years ago, we thought Sonya was going to get that big push. And yeah, stuff happened in her real life, so she kind of stepped back. But she's back now. Let's let's get her out of this realm of being Adam Pierce's lackey. And she's headed for she's headed for a feud with him. Some something I don't know a fucking Survivor Series team against team, and one gets control or something like that. Why? Okay, I love Alexa Bliss. I absolutely adore. Her. As gorgeous as can be, she's got good talent. But why in the fuck is a legitimate MMA fighter, Shayna Baszler, 
worried about a fucking Raggedy Ann rip-off doll on a fucking swing <laughs> and fucking Papa Shango type shit. Uh, Why? Yeah. You I take know. nobody yeah. seriously after that. Nobody. Nope. I don't care if Shayna Baszler would fight the Yeti, the new oh. newly discovered son of Andre the Giant from the French fucking Alps. Well, the Yeti would be good too. Well, the yeah, I I don't care, but it, it's just not. You destroy these guys; they're not believable. We know what we know what guys can do. Certain guys can do. We know what AJ can do. We know what Seth can do. No, nobody takes anything seriously anymore. John, you've been quiet. I was letting Chad go. I sorry about that. More. No, no, it's all right. Um, to your point, I agree. Liv Morgan, I've seen some matches of hers that are very good. Um, when she came out and confronted Zelina Vega, again, it just—I don't know what her personality is. I don't know what her character is. I don't know anything about her. I know that when given the opportunity, she's decent in the ring. When she came out. It looked like she crammed those lines and then they pushed her out the curtain and said, go. It did not look natural. Um, they killed the magic when she decked Zelina Vega. It looked like she decked Zelina Vega. And then they're like, look at this. And they super slow-mo it. And they're like, oh, what a shot. Well, guess what, you assholes? When you do that, You've destroyed the illusion. I swear to you guys, I see then how, like, she cupped the smack. because She doesn't want to punch her in the face or smack her. You know what I mean? In the moment, it looked great. Why are you showing it over and over? Let's just show you how we fake this for you guys. <sighs> the decisions. They used to make the best of, like, the, the most minute decisions. Razor Ramon has talked about this at length over the years, like Vince's camera guys and the decisions that, that Vince made and what was to be seen and shown second to none. And I agree. Doesn't I mean, mean there yeah. wasn't ever a screw up or something. You know, I remember uh, SummerSlam the one year when the big boss man wrestled the Mountie and the loser had to go to jail. Camera picked up this one shot outside the ring that it happens. It, it didn't connect. It happens. I get it. Why are you showing this smack over, over. And over again in super slow motion? I, I just don't get the decisions they make. Oh, my God. John talking about that match. John, do you remember the after shots of the Mountie in jail? Yeah, there was a guy hitting on him, right? Yeah, and talking very, um, <laughs> no, fem oh, this dude was like, yeah, huge and a little bit shorter. And when I say huge, I'm, I'm not body shamed. This dude was fat. He was like Bastion. Was fat, so was he was like, right. no, this guy was like Bastion Booger type fat. And he's hitting on the Mountie and talking in this very feminine voice. <laughs> And the Mountie's eyes in this were like the size of fucking dinner plates. This was classic. Okay, back then was a lot of stuff, you know, just, I don't want to say stupid, but was it hokey? Was it funny? Yeah, it was. But, oh my God, it wasn't every single match. Right. You know, Drew McIntyre with a sword. Now all of a sudden he's you know, fucking Braveheart or, and chopping a table in half with a sword. Um, uh, it just, I can't remember wh which one of you two said it earlier about, we laugh at this, but if it was WWE, we'd shit on it. That's all WWE. When's the last time you guys, a, a good match, name a good match wrestling match in WWE. Not something that had a crutch. Not something that was, you know, that like the Bailey um Bianca Belair match in Hell in a Cell. Name me a good wrestling match the last time that you've seen it. Friday night, um Sami Zayn. I mean that was a last man standing. That was brutal. Um I was just that was match of the night. That was a match of the week for me. Yeah. But beyond that, no, that stood out to me because 
you know, it's a decent thing that I've seen recently. Those guys, and, they've been wrestling again, 20 years. Again, anytime <laughs> you put Owens and Generico or Steen yeah. and Zane in the ring, I could watch it. You see how I did both, one indie, yeah. one non indie? <laughs> yeah, okay. You got that. All right, let's jump to the men. Edge is back. Uh, Edge is ready to take on Roman. Um, that's the big thing in the last two weeks. But Edge isn't going to get a shot at Roman yet. When does Edge get a shot at Roman? Money in the bank. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I missed something then. Yep. Edge Edge challenged him when he came back, not oh. this week, uh, last week. All right, then I missed that. Yeah, he's he challenged him, and he's getting that match. Does he win? Mm. I, I haven't seen anybody yet, to Chad's point earlier, that looks like... They've built up Roman Reigns to be this unstoppable force. Yep. I can't imagine. Come on. Edge's, Edge's interviews are still really good. He's still very believable. Yeah, I know. But, but I, I, come on, man. I, I don't see him being champion. How about Rick Boggs? Who the uh, fuck's Rick Boggs? The guitarist for Shinsuke Nakamura. Oh. I thought, I thought that was the fake Razor Ramon. Is it? What was his name? I'm going to look it up. Go I ahead. don't know, but I hate this guy. Absolutely yeah, I do too. hate oh, this I guy. Do too. Uh, I don't know why I just brought him up. He he just he's he's a hype man for Shinsuke Nakamura, and I hate him. There's a note that I have that I have to get to on this. Um, I I don't know. Uh, I think it was. I don't know, Rick Boggs' joke, and I lost it. Or maybe it was on Raw. This is the way it's going to be. There was a joke I, I pandered into this this week, and I just, I don't know. So, Drew, nonetheless, Drew's in the Money in the Bank. Um, Go ahead, John, did you get it? Rick Bogner was the fake Razor Ramon. He died a couple of years ago. I don't think I knew that. That's sad. Oh, yeah, you, I know you know that. I We I talked about it, I bet you. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Uh, I, can we move on from WWE? Can we go to NXT? Sure. Um, the face-to-face, -face, right, between uh, Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. So when you're in the middle of the pack, like Kyle O'Reilly kind of is, I have what I call the Tito Santana unit of measure. By the way, happy 4th of July as it's going off right now in the back of oh. my house. Yeah, I have fireworks going off here, too. Um, yeah, the Tito Santana unit of measure for a mid-card guy. How do they work? How are they on the microphone? How do they sell? All that sort of stuff. Because I thought Tito Santana was a terrific seller. Terrific. I thought he was very, very good in the ring. And then, eh, on the mic. So that's that's my unit of measure for Kyle O'Reilly. Tito Santana. No, he's got it. Oh, 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 you guys are sticking together. I'm gonna, no, I'm going to say John has a good point. Tito Santana in that day is Kyle O'Reilly now. I think Kyle's a, a little bit more advanced on the wrestling side, but comparable. On the mic, it's like they both get so fucking hyped, you think they're going to fucking drop over from a heart attack. That's it. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I do. Uh, so and the 2021 Tito, Tito Santana is Kyle O'Reilly. I think so. I, I, to Chad's point, I think Kyle's certainly better in the ring. Um, I think Tito Santana sold better, and believe it or not, I think he was a better promo. I am trying so hard with Kyle O'Reilly. I don't know what it is. He can't make me care about his feud with Adam Cole. Adam Cole can. Kyle O'Reilly can't. 2011, when I got back uh, from a tour in Iraq, I went to see a Ring of Honor. I've talked about this a couple of times because there's so many fucking guys break out at this time, at this event. It was 11th anniversary, Ring of Honor's 11th anniversary show. Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly against the Briscoes. I'm like, who the fuck is Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish? Um... 
Kyle O'Reilly has always been Mike Wise. He's kind of the 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 backup guy. He's been more of the action, more of the wrestling, more of the technical. So he's a Robert. He Gibson. was not. He was not the strength on the mic. His was in the ring. He's Robert Gibson. He's good comparison. He'd get fired up. He'd be okay, but after twenty words, if you don't slap the mic out of his hand or cut him off, you're like, he's like me. Then you're like, what the fuck? And Kyle Riley is so good. He is a he has been courted by UFC and Bellator as training for that style of fighting. That says a lot. He has actually trained with a couple of guys to help his wrestling side to make things look realistic. Talking wise, he better fucking grab Ric Flair and get him in a, a hotel room and bar the fucking door and learn how to talk. And I'm not saying he's I'm not saying he's horrible on the mic, but he's not the first person you want to put on the mic to talk. So are you ready for the the match though? Are you at least did Cole get you guys both excited for the match? Yeah, I I liked how that ended like with um what do you say something about everybody knows I'm better than you, you do Joe knows it, I know it, and your wife knows it, and then he smacked him and put him in an ankle lock. Yeah. yeah. But Samoa Joe said, guys, keep it peaceful, and then he did nothing to, like, split them up. He left. Yeah. What the hell, Joe? I thought you were a man of your word. No, he's not He's not there to keep the guys from beating the shit out of each other. He's there to protect Regal. He's there to protect Regal. And uh, Adam Cole... And Adam Cole, and I i don't, I may be prejudiced uh, because seeing him in IWC and Ring of Honor when I did, and as cool as he's been and everything, Adam Cole can do no wrong in my eyes. Everything he touches turns to gold. Him and O'Reilly, especially since old man McMahon isn't going to have a big hand in this, it's going to be Triple H. This could legitimately be the match of the decade if they let them go at it. If they let them do their own thing. If they, you know, fucking cut their nuts off and give them a script, then this this is, it's still going to be a good match because it's these two. Let them go at it. Give them 30 minutes and say, fucking have fun. This could be the match of the decade. Boy, were we all wrong on the Diamond Mine, too. Since uh, we haven't what talked the about the fuck? Diamond Mine. And what a what a breakup that we hope and pray someday that, you know, the Undisputed Arrow can get back together. But Roderick Strong leading a group is like uh, this, pe- this, this <laughs> Pepsi can talking on a podcast yeah. because... He's as dry as five year old fart in church. Yeah. Man, this group, I don't know what they're going to do with it, but it's not going to go over. It, you know what's going to be more exciting? The oddities. Wow. We're going to we're going to learn a lot when crowds come back. We are. I want to pose a question to the two of you guys. When the crowds come back, After, I don't know, let's say a couple of weeks, maybe a month. I was going to say a month, because people are just fucking excited to be here. Okay, that is exactly where I'm going. After the initial, holy fuck, we're back and everybody's pumped. I mean, they could send out, you know, fucking the gobbledygooker against fucking, I I don't know. Eugene. Eugene. I would love that. Um, They could send out those and the people would love it. After the initial... Roar is done. Which is what gonna, happens? Which what is going to be till what? WrestleMania? No. Yes, it will. Nope. Before I don't think you hit every town. I'm telling you, you not have, every, you have to go through towns. You have you you got the pay per views coming. You I, got the Survivor Series. You got you got those coming. I don't right, think it's going to be that long. Give all me. All right. Then I want that. 
one of their first pay-per-views, and they're not doing it. They're going to stay in Houston, Texas. Their first pay-per-view should have been in Chicago. They'll fucking tell you everything you need to know. I give it after, and I guess my question was, how long do you guys think that it takes before the fans are like, okay, great, they're fucking back, they're touring, we're over that excitement, now we want substance. We don't want just fucking... Rumble, then. Rumble. Smoke and mirrors. Rumble. I don't even give them that long. I say fucking Survivor no, I, Series. I agree, Chad. Yeah, it, fans are, are pent up, and wrestling fans especially are very demanding. They, they're not going to wait long. I, I just think they're gonna they're gonna play the towns. They're gonna they're by the time they wrap around and stuff. I mean, they're gonna try throwing you some stuff. As Stephanie says there's gonna be a whole new. That was Vince, but there's gonna be a whole new reset kind of da 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 da. da. Everything's coming. We heard that five years ago, and yeah. Ste- Stephanie also said that everything WWE does it's is is it's planned a year in advance. And How she fucking like- took that from Vince Senior. Yeah, what he said, the exact fucking words, and like three or four sentences that, God rest his soul, that Vince Senior said. That's where she took her whole whole quote down. You guys talked about a reset. Both of both of you kind of yeah. mentioned it. Do you think that some of the champions? They kind of got fucked over by the by the I, COVID I situation. Do you think that they give them a shot? So you're saying Drew's getting the title back? That's ex- I would not be surprised at all if Drew McIntyre beats Bob La- Bobby Lashley in seven minutes or less. And then when- I wouldn't even be surprised if he does it at fucking Money in the Bank. When's Brock come back? Because that's what they're setting back up for then. Why not have uh, Drew beat Lashley? Drew's going to win the fucking money in the bank. I know that. I, I think that's almost a guaranteed. If he doesn't cash that in at money in the bank, I would be, okay, legitimately surprised. If he does, what's not to say, since that's going to be their first one back with people... What's not to say that, holy shit, Drew wins the title, he's fucking celebrating. And here's Lesnar's music, and Lesnar comes down and fucking destroys Drew. And there's your summer We slam are match. reset back there's your two years. Match. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah. I did not consider that, but what if they, you know, want to see what they missed out on? It's exactly it's what not that hard to re- Yeah, it's not that hard to reset it. Yeah. I... I watched this recently. Uh, actually, it was, I think it was Tuesday I watched this. Um, the event, and oh my God, sorry, I've had about a third of a bottle of rum, so I can't remember the event. But where. I've been half by now. Dean I, Ambrose. Well, I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> I'd get really rude on the podcast if I wasn't. We don't need If that. I was doing. Well, the Money in the Bank where Dean Ambrose won. Seth Rollins makes his return from his injury and beats Roman Reigns for the title. And then Ambrose, as Seth is celebrating, comes down and cashes in the money in the bank. That was one of the next to Seth pulling that shit on Roman and Brock at WrestleMania. That was the best money in the bank cash in, in my eyes. opinion, in my eyes. How do they get back to that? If they don't catch the fans and give them some interest and something to hang on to and some doubt, they're gonna lose. They're they're gonna lose big time. And I think Money in the Bank is gonna be interesting. I really do. John, anything else on NXT besides your homeboy Swerve winning the North American Championship? <laughs> nice. Yeah, I love that group. That was, that was about it. Wait, three weeks ago you hated them. I know. No, I, they've they've grown on me. They really have. Um, I think there's potential there. I, I like that guy that looks like Shug D. I like that uh, that woman. I don't even know her name, but they're they're pretty dope. I like them a lot. 
All right, let's get let's transition to AEW. We'll give them a few minutes too because we have our third segment to wrap up a lot of stuff. Um, Jericho on commentary this week was phenomenal. Did I? I meant Shug Knight. Is that what I said? He said Shug D. Shug D. Who was that? That was IWC. I'm just your son Ethan. It, Ethan called him Sudge D. It was uh, <laughs> Sugar Duncanton from IWC. IWC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Ethan was wondering why his name was Sudge D. <laughs> and this guy took on Sudge D? <sighs> you can go back and watch those on the Mark and Ethan show on uh, YouTube. <laughs> when we recapped IWC. Jesus, I thought you guys were talking about the sludge at the fucking... Uh, no, Ethan and I used to recap IWC shows on his... <laughs> Very short run, ran, run. Yeah, it's. I'm about 64 ounces in right now. Eh, 48. All right, 48. Um, and we would recap IWC shows, which he had some great interviews. He had he interviewed Wardlow, Britt. Uh, the best the best one was when Sylvan and AJ and him all had the fraternity the fraternity on. Uh, Mark Merrill is my favorite wrestler. Uh, uh, yeah. So, cheap pop there. Go back and watch the uh, Mark and Ethan show on YouTube. Just type it in. We do some stupid stuff, but we do do some IWC stuff. All right. Sudge D comes into play there. Um, I hated the Kingston and Penta versus the Bucks match. And it wasn't because of the Bucks. Because the Bucks are assholes. I, I like the Bucks as assholes. I love their horrible stash and facial hair. What the fuck? I I told you I'd piss you off earlier. Today. No, there's a fucking... It's it's like he had a gray squirrel tail under his fucking nose and down, and then the other one shaved off his goatee. I like it. What the fuck? And then they have those fucking Arabian... Now you're pissing off the fans over no, there. No, I'm just... They, those Arabian beads hanging down from their fucking headbands and shit... They look like rejects from the fucking, uh, who's the, the, they sang the, the YMCA. Show. The village people. The village people. I'm telling you why I hated it. I don't like Kingston and Penta as a tag team whatsoever. Not at all. I, I don't care if they're homies. I don't either. A, no, a brother from another mother. I don't, I don't, I don't like them as a tag team. It's odd. Um, Eddie Kingston, I'm just going to say this. I would shake his hand and say thank you for him telling Bully Ray to suck a wang earlier this week and late last week in their little exchange. Bully Ray telling him you've never been on the main, you know, mainstream of wrestling. You need to stay in your lane. Okay, coming from somebody who's one of his biggest storylines was marrying Hulk Hogan's daughter, who is more plastic than a Tonka truck. Wait, um, wait. who's married to Hulk Hogan's daughter? It was a story. It was a storyline. Oh, 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 okay, yeah. yeah it was right, a storyline right. in TNA. Yeah. I think I believe it was the initial one that brought Hogan into TNA. Which okay, they're fucked right there. Um, but Bully Ray married her in storyline, to get whatever title shot and stuff, gets the heavyweight title, and then gets his ass kicked by 150-pound Chris Saban and loses his title. Oh, we're fucking all over the place tonight. Sorry. I, I just, no. I don't I don't <laughs> like Bully Ray. The only thing the Dudleys ever did that was good in Bully Ray and Devon was ECW. the TLC matches. Uh, all right, the whatever. initial two. I didn't care for him in ECW because... I don't. I did. Well, Joe Gertner was the one that I cared for. Yeah, they they were like they were like. I I swear I can't remember where this guy. I seen this guy, but they called him Fat Bastard. I call you that. So. And yeah, well, he. I think it was actually an ECW. But these guys, that's where they they made their reputation. And Vince McMahon seen somebody that was hot, brought him in, toned him down. Edge and Christian and the Hardys. Gave him a stutter. Let's not forget that. Yeah. yeah. Get, 
remind me on that one. Uh, Edge and Christian and the Hardys are what made the Dudleys famous in WWF. As far as, well, it was I know, WWF. Saying... As far as the stutter, nobody will ever, 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 shout out to Chris Jericho, top Dustin Rhodes and his fucking, uh, uh, what the hell's it? Tourette's uh, syndrome shit. Nothing is ever, just stop. Nobody will ever stop that, so, sorry. All right, anything on AEW uh, that we, we want to bring up? Um, I love Santana and Ortiz. I just love them. I liked what Conan did, but I think that was the week before. But just to kind of mention that for a minute, you know, we talked about Cody Rhodes uh, and his match against Anthony Agogo at the pay-per-view and how he hyped the crowd with kind of a political speech. And now you have, you know, you, you can argue, you can argue that Cody's speech leaned right. And then you have what Conan is saying, and you can argue that leans left. That's good stuff. That That's stuff that's happening right now. You're going to gain some people. You're going to piss some people off. But guess what? It's art. It's entertainment. That's what you're supposed to do. So when Conan is telling Tully Blanchard, like, listen, man. You've lived a charmed life. You know, people of my heritage, we get, whether you believe it or not, that's the whole point. We get singled out by cops. We get killed at a higher rate. We live in poverty. Whether you believe that or not, you're bound to have an opinion on it. You'll either get fired up for it or it'll piss you off. Uh, when Tully's guys came out, I thought I thought it was Santana and Ortiz and they jumped Conan. I thought that was brilliant. Um, but the following week, that promo was fantastic. That there's some, you just have a feeling some shit's going to go down. And even after it goes down, it's not over because like they said, hasta la muerte y después. Cody's. That was two weeks of getting that in too. <laughs> go ahead. You know what that means? Oh yeah. Tell everybody else though. Uh, yeah. So for. Everybody other than Mark, it means like till death and beyond. Right. So that's that's, a, that's a, my next tattoo, by the way. Yeah. Hasta la muerte y después. That's yeah. your next tattoo. Yeah. Cody's. <laughs> Cody's uh, um, promos and stuff. Just I they were they were good. Okay to good. But it didn't have the relevance. I I thought, okay, USA versus England. Okay, we fucking took care of that back when we dumped their tea and shit like that. We're done with that feud. <laughs> um, Sam or er, uh, Conan's <laughs> Conan's was Conan's was fucking relatable. I'm sitting there. And you know what's funny? If you if you can look it up, if they still have it posted, there was an in, uh, just slight interview with uh, interview clip. Sorry, with Tully Blanchard about this, and he said that son of a bitch caught me off guard. He said I didn't know what the fuck to say because Tully was just standing there looking at him like, "Fuck, I got I, I got I got fucking nothing, but I got to think of something here." Uh Sidebar real quick, this guy, I don't know who these two are in, in this match. They're using a shopping cart to beat the piss out of each other. He won because he bashed his face into a shopping cart. Uh, John, we could have ran this. We could have, we, we beat uh, each other with shopping carts before. Then there's bleachers involved. Sorry. Um, but I, I agree with John. It's like Santana hit some really fucking personal points. Okay, Cody hit some that was maybe good a couple of hundred years ago. But Santana's was like, holy shit. Um, glad to you see... You mean Conan? Or Conan, Conan. yes. Yeah, I'm face sorry. to face with Blanchard, yeah. Um, Santana and Ortiz, I'm glad to see they kind of, sh you know, shaved their manable fucking look that they had going. Yeah. Um, that was bad. Uh, this week... But it was... This was, this was good. The highlight... And obviously, match of the week, match of the last couple of weeks, um, match of the last maybe few months, probably. Uh, 
Sammy in MJF. Holy fuck. Okay, you're going to get a, you know, stupid ending. You knew that was coming. But the match Which itself... 20 minutes of itself. That fucking pile driver yeah. off the top rope, I was like, I, I don't remember, other than maybe a, a scaffold match, seeing something more dangerous that had me like, don't fucking do that. No, don't fucking do that. And they walked away. I think he should have sold it a little bit more. I think MJF should have sold it a little bit more. But that aside, that fucking match, that had me worried. That move, I was like, I mean, Vinny was sitting there and he was like, holy sh, I won't say that word, Dad. Right. <laughs> when he was watching that match. Um, I think Rebels really hurt. Reba really dislocated really, kneecap. Yeah, she she went down Ooh. hard. She barely moved. So that I. Uh, but I hats went, off to her for finishing the fucking match. Yeah, she did. Um, Britt keeps this title, right? Nyla is going to be your yeah. first big. She's going to beat Nyla. She's got to, right? I agree. Yeah. Yeah. If. They, they, she's been the face, you know, she's like the first person they signed and everything. Yeah. She's not losing the championship this fast. Okay. They, they can't. This would be, this would be slitting the throats of the women division if in AEW, if they have her lose this title on this defense. This is her, it's not her first defense of the title. Right. But, her first but it is her match. first, you know, real opponent. Um, they no, this would be bad if they had her lose the title. I don't care even if it was have her lose the title on the weekend show and win it back on the Wednesday. No, she needs to keep this title. This is the they need to do this the equivalent of the Roman Reigns run right now. They need to do this with Brett. I agree. Anything else you guys want to talk about AEW wise? We'll head to the third segment. No, yeah, those were the big points. Those are the big points. Chad's gulping. So uh, when we come back, we'll, we're going to talk about what we have to do in the third segment when we pee and take a break. So we'll be right back. What's up, guys? This is Jared Fritz, official for the NWA, and you're getting rest fit with the Can Crushers podcast. And welcome back, Can Crusher Nation. It is I, the Glorious Guru, in his studio with Mark the Mark. And via Skype, we have... John, the blueberry fiend, yogurt eaten, English professor. Why is this your studio all of a sudden? I said your I studio oh, in, in his head. studio. Oh, I took it. <clears throat> all right, that's what happens when you start drinking again. Um, or keep drinking for a long period. Keep drinking for a long period. I took the week off after I did that bottle of vodka last week. So Jesus, good. yeah, that's crazy. So, fireworks going ape shit all of a sudden here outside the studio. Speaking of ape shit, the first thing I want to bring back is Jungle Boy. Two, Mark and John and I have talked about this <laughs> offline, but that's a hell of a segment. Son that's of a, a bitch, that's a good that's a good segue right there. Speaking of ape shit, Jungle Boy, there you go. Um I should be a writer for WWE. Cheer, well, first of all, I think we should say cheers to Jungle Boy. Cheers to Jungle Boy. Salute to you, you 140-pound motherfucker. In a nice way. In a nice way. In a, a admiration, as in we're not worthy type way. Um, Jungle Boy and Anna J are a long-term item. It is coming out now. Um he should be as much ass as he was grabbing in that picture that we saw. Good Twitter. Lord, it was like a fucking suction cup, his hand to her right at or left ass cheek. But, you know, kudos. Um, very beautiful young lady. Uh, and he's a good looking guy. And Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, for a 120 pound guy, I'm sorry I have him by 100 pounds. Uh, he, has me, left leg. he has me looks wise by about 1,000%. Um, but kudos to him. Holy shit. You know, I I don't give a shit if he wins the fucking title. Just that picture is enough to, you know, make make him so somebody uh, kissing and grabbing ass is is what to that mean? yes. It's not like we're talking about fucking Vicky Guerrero 
or fucking what was a, a birth of Faye or something like that. We're talking about Anna J, which um, on a serious note with her, um, I hope she continues to get well from her injuries um, and her other physical problems. Uh, I don't want not. I wasn't saying psychological. I was thinking uh, she has some uh, intestinal problems, I guess, from what I'm reading and stuff like that. Uh, hope, you know, uh, thoughts and prayers that she recovers as soon as possible. Love to see you back in ring as soon as possible. So let's keep the, before we go down the silly path again, let's keep the thoughts and prayers coming because, um... I'm sure within the last couple of weeks, everybody saw the Mr. Wonderful post that was on Twitter, TikTok, every social media out there. His son posted it about his his failing health. Uh, we talked about Mr. Wonderful in depth a couple times, how all three of us really, we loved his work. Um, he's in rough shape. He, he is in rough shape, so please keep thoughts and prayers up for him because that that post that his son put up was one of the hardest things for me to watch in a long time. Um, I'm a smart ass. Uh, big surprise there. Uh, I'll admit it. I'm an asshole at times. Watching that video, I could only watch about sixty seconds of it. Uh, brought tears to my eyes. Um, Reminded me of my uh, father's decline in health. Um, and when I say this, Lord, forgive me, this is the first thing that come to my mind. And I'm not meaning it in a derogatory way. I'm meaning it in a dead serious way. Uh, if you remember back, I guess it was uh, mid-80s HBO series, uh, Tales from the Crypt. Yeah, the guy look the the guy the crypt keeper. That's what Paul Orndorff looks like at this point. He does. Um, he's about one hundred and twenty pounds. Uh, uh, if if that the skeleton. Yeah, um, he's he's a skeleton with. And, well, I'm and I don't and I, him right right behind yeah, your I don't I don't mean to be disrespectful at all, but he's he's a skeleton with enough flesh. And that to be alive right now. Um, he he knows who his son is. He remembers bits and pieces about wrestling. Uh, the one thing I'm always I always remember about Paul Orndorff, and like uh, Mark said, we're looking at a WWE picture off to my right. I'm gonna go back even further to Georgia Championship Wrestling days. Um, Paul Orndorff being the national champion at the time and getting ready to challenge Ric Flair for the title. He forfeited the title, turned it over uh, to one of the Crockett's, um, and said, I cannot train for this world title match while still having this title ar around my waist. Yes, was it a storyline, but holy shit, he made it believable. And he came within a hair's width, and I don't care that it's storyline or anything, but he came as close as you could get to beating Flair for the title. And I remember that match, and it was just like, he just sucked you in. He told the story. He played it so well. And then we see the, you know, the WWF, um, him getting co-cocked by uh, Cowboy Bob Orton, uh, with the cast, uh, then befriending Hogan, and then turning on him in the series that they had. Next to Barry Windham, as far as a legitimate world title run, I would have to put Paul Orndorff in there as a close number two that should have had the world title at some point. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree, John. I loved his uh, his weight training sessions when he was trying to 
get people who don't usually go to the gym to lift weights and just making fun of them and they don't know what they're doing because they're fat and stupid and get out of the way and let me show you how it's done. Um, I remember when they beat the guy up uh, in New York because they were there for like, you know, training for their WrestleMania match and Mean Gene Oakland came around. And they're like, look, we told you not to come. <laughs> they took him and they threw him out and this guy walked by. He's like, hey, is there trouble? And Paul Orndorff and Cowboy Bob Orton beat up some random guy on the street. Yeah. Um, nothing? Yeah. It, oh, no, I just, I'm looking at pictures right now. Um, and a, yeah. years ago when he was in uh, WCW in the final days and he was more managerial um, than anything, I remember seeing him and his right arm was in uh, the, I guess, middle stages of uh, muscle atrophy. And if you look at a, a, a great picture, like we're looking to the side here, um, where he was huge and he was in his prime, his arm was probably a third of the size that it was then. And Seeing that video of him, remembering that, and then I looked up, actually looked up atrophy. Um, it's not something that affects just a certain part of the body. It's a whole body. It starts in a certain area pretty much like 95% of the time, and then it spreads to everything. Rapidly. Um, it is like kind of like the reverse of the disease that Andre the Giant had, where he kind of just ballooning and ballooning and his features got so bad. Uh, the atrophy is the opposite of that. And they say never, you don't ever want to meet your heroes or somebody that you looked up to. And I think of that. I've I've never met him. Obviously, seen so many of his matches. I've seen him in person, but I think of that, seeing what he was back then, and seeing where he's going now. And all anybody can hope to, whether you're fans of his or not, let him go peacefully and not in pain. Without pain, yeah. So keep. Keep Mr. Wonderful Paul Endorf in your thoughts and prayers, and keep the family of the Patriot, Del Welk, says he passed away this past week in your prayers as well. Um, 59 with a massive heart attack, right? Is that what I read, John? That's correct, yeah. I, I wanted, <laughs> I got I got to make a little joke, and I think he'd appreciate this, Um Anybody that teams with Marcus Bagwell and has a successful team should be appreciated. Um, but he was truly a good guy. He was um, he was at big time wrestling uh, quite a few times. I have, in fact, the uh, first time I went to big time, he was there. Uh, he had that massive feud with Bret Hart. Um, one of the guys that. I don't want to say, well, no, I do want to say, he didn't need built up. He didn't need the huge promos. I legitimately thought when Brett was champion that the Patriot was going to beat him for the fucking title for a short reign. He was involved in the Montreal matches, or Montreal, I don't want to say the screw job, the, uh, the one where Austin got arrested. I can't remember what they called that. Um... Just a good guy. You're talking like the ten man tag team match? Yeah, yeah. I remember that. That was Calgary. That was Calgary. Calgary, Calgary Stampede. Uh just a you know, a good guy. You really didn't hear a lot about him. Um he's only, you know, ten years older than me. It it just kinda made me think. And I don't want to speculate and I don't think anybody respectfully should on what led to um his passing. But he was a good guy. 
Um, he was a good wrestler. He was over with the fans, no matter where the hell he went. He knew how to work the fans. He knew how to get them involved. And uh, this is a loss to pro wrestling in general. Yeah, for sure. For sure. John, anything on the Patriot? GWF is where I first saw him. Um, Global Wrestling Federation was a brand new promotion. He was super over there. He kicked things off by winning both championships right off the bat. He won the uh, television title there, I think, by beating Al Perez in the finals. And then as television champion, he was entered into the world title tournament and then won that too. Uh, so that was my introduction to the Patriot. And then uh, it was cool to see him, you know, in the WWF and all the things Chad mentioned. It was um, a natural feud to go against Bret Hart, who was – you know, bashing the United States at the time. Yeah. So to Del Welks and to Mr. Wonderful, we're raising our glass. Uh, thoughts and prayers to you and your families. Um, uh, it, it's just rough. So we might as well keep it here and pray somebody that hasn't passed or isn't sick. So, John, what's your segue to say segment? To, yeah. Uh, it is called uh, Love Them While We Have Them. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to appreciate a wrestler or a wrestling personality while that person is still with us, rather than posthumously. Uh, every week, one of us will bring a name to the table, and we celebrate that person in the hopes that they're listening and know just how much they're appreciated. So with that, it is Chad's turn to uh, bring a name to the table. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. I was didn't think of this uh think of this name think ahead for this program we've kind of just thrown this program together can you together. not tell yeah you know we're this back is, and we're drinking is, tonight yeah uh first drinking program in wow. months um but looking on mark's wall the, the first picture that really caught my eyes was uh magnum ta um wow i'm shocked that we haven't uh, and I was thinking about that. I was like, have we, have we, have we? No, we've talked about Nikita Koloff, but we haven't talked about Magnum TA. And I just, obviously their, their careers are intertwined and both of them were elevated by each other, um, by their time. But, uh, I, I gotta go with Magnum TA. John, go ahead. Magnum TA. <clears throat> Uh, I had an opportunity to talk to Magnum maybe a couple times. Really nice guy. Um, first down, first time down by Pat's house. Exactly right. Yes. Um, he had two, uh, little kids. They were twins and not to get, you know, into his personal life, but there were these two really cute kids, a boy and a girl that were helping him out. <clears throat> uh, didn't know that, you know, they were his kids and then he, he, Explain that they were and uh, certainly didn't. That's when we discovered Tessa Blanchard. We certainly did, did not know they were uh, her brother and sister. Um, then when I saw him again, uh, I bought a Nikolai Volkov doll off of him. Get this with the hat and with the card back. And it was either like five or ten dollars, which was a steal. I don't know if Magnum knew exactly what he had in that box there, but um, I had just met Nikolai. Had him autograph my uh, LJN. Mark was like, "Just go buy a new. You're gonna." I'm like, "No, nah, I'm never gonna play with him again. It's ridiculous. I'm too old." And he's like, "You're gonna want one for you." I'm like, "Okay." Uh, we were online for someone. I don't remember whom. And I was like, yeah, "Shit, hold my place in line." And I bolted over to Magnum and I bought the Nikolai. But Mark had to hold my place for a while because Magnum was just so forthcoming with information and conversation and really, really good dude. I saw his kids again, told him how I remembered them from last time. The little girl was, you know, taking money for the stuff that her dad was selling. Um, he talked to me about how he wasn't crazy about the idea of Nikita turning baby face. He didn't think it worked. He said it absolutely got a huge pop, but he said it was way too soon. Um, and how he was in a hospital watching it when when that happened. But, but uh, the wrestling career speaks for itself. As short as it was, 
Um, the wrestling career speaks for itself. But, you know, on somewhat of a personal level, meeting him a couple of different times, not everybody is as uh, as warm and as inviting um, as he was a couple of times we met him. Yeah, I I have to echo, John. Uh, I've met him now a couple more times. Uh, Russell Cade as well and everything. He he was just a – he loves talking to his fans. He really does. He, he wants to know where you're from, what's going on. Uh, if you tell him you met him before, he's like, "Well, how you been? What have, what have you been up to recently?" He he's great. He he's a great person. Um, the car accident was what ended everything, and I think the wrestling world. We all know the wrestling world would have changed if he would have gotten you know the title or even have the ability to train people. Like, he, he can do the psychological stuff, he can do stuff like that, he can tell you what to do, but wouldn't you have loved to see, you know, Nick Aldis trained by Magnum TA, or Seth Rollins, or, you know, somebody like that, to have that throwback of Magnum TA training. So, the wrestling world lost a lot in that injury, in, in that car wreck. Um... Not as much as Magnum lost, so Magnum lost a lot. So, I, I, John said it perfectly that his career, as short as it was, was phenomenal. I mean, you talk about the I Quit match. Wrestling fans across the world bring that match up as a, a top five match. So, Magnum TA, I love you. Go ahead, Chad. Um, Magnum, I knew before... I say new, watched him. Uh, my brother lived in St. Mary's, and he got the UWF uh, weekly show. We couldn't get it in Ridgeway. No. Nope. And I remember my f the first match was for the uh, North American title was Magnum TA against Kamala. I'm like, there's... It's so funny, they're right next to each other on the wall. Yeah, uh, no, I was like, there's no fucking way Kamala's going to beat his ass. I thought the same thing, yep. And Magnum just, the he fought, and they did the match so well that, okay, he wasn't overwhelming Kamala, because realistically, there's no fucking way he could, but he just kept in and kept in and kept in. The best belly-to-belly -belly suplex I have ever seen in my life, don't care who it is, was when Magnum hit Kamala with that out of fucking nowhere and pinned him. And it was the first pinfall Kamala ever took in his career. Other than when he was, I, I can't remember what his name was before. Um, but his, his main thing that Kamala, which propelled him to, you know, WWF and everything like that. Um, Magnum was a ladies' man. Uh, there was a reason that they pushed him the way they did. That was partially, that was like 2%. But he could wrestle. If you wanted to fight, he could fight. If you wanted a technical match with Flair or Barry Windham, uh, he, could, he could do that. He was the complete wrestler. Um, in my books, he he had everything that there is or should be in a wrestler. Um, the accident, uh, <laughs> the first time I ever cried in wrestling and watching wrestling was when they came on, uh, the Saturday show after that, after his accident and David Crockett was there and he was just, he just looked gray. He just looked like he was, you know, uh, one step shy of being dead. And he talked about, you know, we have sad news to report. And they talked about the Magnum accident. And I'm like, this is fucked up to have this as a storyline. Even as a kid, I was like, this is 
And then I realized almost immediately they're not no. they're not lying. Um, if you guys haven't gotten the Magnum TA video, I didn't I didn't quit. Um, there's not much more of a uh, inspirational video out there that you could watch on any athlete across any sport. Um, he was in hospital. Uh, wrote they were rotating him, so his his fluids and stuff didn't settle. He was that he was that close to death. Um, you can't get much closer than that. Uh, talking about, you can look it up, uh, Tully Blanchard and J.J. Dillon talking about how, uh, I can't think of what the guy's, the security guy's name is, um, at the time, but they would get the horseman in to visit Magnum at the hospital, like after midnight, uh, Derringer, I think, yeah. um, Magnum just meeting him at Wrestlecade. I wanted to, I wanted to cry. Yeah. I mean, he's, he just, he very easily could have packed it in and said, I got nothing to live for. And he doesn't, um, does the interviews, you know, you talked about Nikita, everything mm -hmm. like that. Uh, he's just, the wrestling world, us wrestling fans, lost a lot uh, with him. But more, we still have him. So, And we've had him throughout the years. And he's still out there. He's making appearances. He's talking and everything. Uh, hard to find somebody that's as, as good of a man as he is. So, John... Magnum TA, cheers to being here. Cheers to being here, Magnum. All right, you guys know it's 4th of July, and this is my little stupid thing here in the third segment. Uh, you hear the fireworks in the back. You, you, you hear... Um, so I have two questions for you. One, when you think of Independence Day and wrestling, who's the first wrestler that comes to your mind? And the three of us will go one at a time. Independence Day combined with pro wrestling. Yeah. First person comes to mind. American Dream Dusty Rhodes. Uh, I hate myself for saying this, but Lex Luger and uh, slamming Yokozuna on the 4th of July thing. I have both of you beat. It's Corporal Kirshner. Oh, you suck. Right? <laughs> good, old, good, good old Corporal Kirshner. Wasn't he like a doink the clown or no. something? No! Oh. Corporal Kirshner, go back and listen to Super Hentai's interview. He loved Corporal Kirshner. Loved him. And he's one of the rarest LJNs out there, right, John? With the beard? Yeah. I, I don't know if I've told this story, but I bought a box. The guy didn't know what he had. He just was trying to get rid of his LJNs, and there was a Corporal Kirshner with the beard. You're welcome, by the way. Thank you, yeah. Uh, you pointed that out, right? Yeah. You told me about it, yeah. You can't, you can't guy, go like Punks and Tawny to get it. Yeah, I gave the guy a hundred bucks for the box of wrestlers. Corporal Kirshner alone, they said could get you three hundred. I don't know that he could, but I got one fifty just for Corporal Kirshner, and then just kind of sold all the other ones a little bit at a time, pimping it out. So yeah. when you also think of the Fourth of July, what? I'm sorry, John. You're not on uh, not on Facebook. I don't know, Mark, if you've seen this, but. Uh, Mr. Zappa. Ben our, Zappa. Ben Zappa, our uh, beloved science teacher from high school. Biology. Biology. Sorry, science, biology. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, at that point it was the same thing. Um, he, posed, he, he had a post this week where he, somebody said if, if you had, growing up, what was your uh, job that you always wanted to do? And he said jokingly, and this goes out, 
this wasn't just like a little personal post and his little friends. This was like on something that went out to, I think there was like 1.2 million comments or something like that. And he said a pimp. I couldn't resist. John, what do you think I looked up image-wise and put on underneath a reply to him? The Godfather. Mine would be Pee Wee Herman. I put the God... I put the Godfather dancing down the ramp with four hoes, and it's saying pimping ain't easy. <laughs> nice. Uh, when you think of America and all of that, throwing the national anthem out the window, because we're still wrestling related, what is your wrestling song when you think of somebody coming out to the ring? I am a real American. Is there any better? Is there uh, any other? That's what I was, oh, okay. Was okay, together. throw that out. Find one. Throw Hulk Hogan out. Um, and, and Corporal Kirshner's because it's actually a legit like army song, right? Yeah. All right. So it's got to be a wrestling thing. Sergeant Slaughter's was the same as Corporal Kirshner's, I think, right? No. No. It was different. Fucker. Pick mine. <laughs> no, uh, no, I wasn't going to take that. The Marine him wasn't Sergeant Sword as a Marine him. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't Corporal Kirshner's. No, Corporal Kirshner's was. Uh, it was a, it was a, di- it was a different. I know it wasn't. Talk amongst yourselves. Yeah. Um, all right. <laughs> Entrance themes. Entrance themes. Uh, American. God, we're like all the standstill. Isn't it the same thing? Essentially. Uh, it, was, it was a play on it. I don't want to say it's the same thing. It's a little bit a little bit different. Uh as odd as this is gonna sound, this is this was used and I've seen a lot of times in my military career at uh retirement ceremonies was Randy Savage's pomp and circumstance. And that's just the military side of me remembering that. That's Sergeant Slaughter? 1991. Hardcore. Yeah, 91. Okay. In the 80s, they all used that Marine hymn, though. If I have to pick one, I'm going with Dusty with uh, Dusty Rhodes again. The um, his WWF. American yeah. <laughs> dream. Yep. And then Sapphire comes out. <laughs> she gets the coming man. That one. That's it. Yeah. Fourth of July. Let's since we're doing I was themes. Say Kurt Angle. But all right, I don't suck. Apparently, you don't. Care what I say, but all right. No, all right. um, was the best anti-American character ever? Come on, between the three of us, it would probably have to be uh, Ginger Mahal, John. <laughs> no, it's, the, it's the Iron Sheik. The I, oh, I'm sorry, you said Ginger Mahal. I thought we were talking right, about when John did his right. That's what I meant. You know, yeah, but it's racist the Iron, Halloween it's costume. The Iron Sheik. And Colonel Dewar's <laughs> would be a second for me, as much as I hated I, I, Colonel. Oh, uh, that's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. The the worst, absolute worst, like holy fuck, was Colonel De Beers. That was bad. Yeah, him with Jimmy Snuka, it was like holy shit. Um, <laughs> I gotta go back to Sergeant Slaughter as probably the second uh, during the Iraqi War, and he has the turncoat. The turncoat, the balls with Adnan Al Casey and fucking Iron Sheik. Holy fuck, he's lucky he didn't get his ass shot. Wait, I thought that was Colonel Mustafa. You're saying it was the Iron Sheik? It's not the same guy. No. What the fuck are you two smoking? <laughs> exactly, Chad. Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't miss. Um, what else do we got? And on? Adnan went from Sheik to General. He used to be Sheik Adnan, all case, and then became General Adnan. Yeah. I wonder how, I wonder when he got upped. I wonder, 
you know. Yeah, it was so, I guess it was how a, many times he led Sarge to the ring, promoted him. Uh, all right. I was thinking it was a royal family designation as Sheik, and then general as military. So I, I you know, going from a family, I don't, I don't know. Okay, fourth wall. Yeah, it is Saturday night, guys. Um, so I will ask you guys this, and hopefully everybody is listening to this prior or after. Are you watching Joey Chestnut crush everybody in the hot dog eating contest tomorrow? I live for Fourth of July for that. It's on at like noon, or I might be on the road. I don't know. I hope so. I'd like to. John is uh, on vacation all next week, guys, so he won't be joining us for the weekly show. So just does like, Joey Chestnut lose the title, or no, does he no, successfully no defend? Way. The only way is I'm going to go. I'm going to go with the upset. You're crazy. I'm going to say he loses the title. You're you're stupid. Have another drink. Now, oh, I'm going to have another drink, but I'm saying you, John, you write this shit down because you're the one that keeps track of this shit. I won the last betting on the pay-per-view. I'm going to win this one. This isn't a soup guys 1.5 point fucking win and guessing. Right. I say he loses the title in an upset. Am I going to give you a spread on the number of hot dogs? No. But he's going to lose the title this year. And if he loses, I have to eat five hot dogs. But if he continues to win, you have to eat ten. I don't care. I'm a fat bastard. I'll do it. During the podcast next That's week. fine. It See how long it takes me to eat them? I don't yeah. care. This is awesome. <laughs> you might want to come back from the he, early next And week. if he ties... John has to eat 20. When he comes back. When he comes back. All right. That's fine. God, I'm rooting for you. Tie, tie, tie. Tie. We need to go We need to go to wherever this is happening and charge the stage. It's in New York. When he's tying. Tomorrow. Yeah. Who? The contest. Yeah. I yeah, didn't know. Coney what, Island. Yeah. Okay. Every year. We got to charge. We got to cut the contest off at a tie. They declare to draw John's eating it, 20. The only time it's going to be a tie is 0-0. Zero, zero. No. Yeah. Not happening. That's all I have. John, you have anything? I don't think so. No. No. I hope you have a great vacation, buddy. Thank you. We're going to Hershey for a few days. Nothing spectacular, but... Get in the park? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah Chocolate World and... It's really fun. It really is. We, it did, is, it, we yeah. did it a couple years I ago. I have been there in a long time. Sorry. Go ahead. Are you going to make your own Hershey bar? Absolutely. Yes. Are you going to eat it? Yeah, hell yeah. Kelly saved ours for years that we didn't eat them. And I, I don't know if they're still around. We made one that said Mark and Ethan and Kelly, but it's not, it's like, it's cute, but I was really upset that we didn't, because I put like all this cool stuff in it and then I didn't get to eat it. Yeah, I'm eating mine. Yeah. Yeah. Chad? I'm sorry. All I can think of when you guys, Hershey bars and stuff like that. As oh, I think of the original Caddyshack movie and the fucking candy bar going through the pool and them thinking it was a fucking turd. Come on. Do you guys not remember that scene? I, I do. Bill Murray fucking you grabbing know, it. Yeah. Ooh, or, no, no, no. It wasn't a Hershey bar, but I'm sorry. That's all. It was I, a baby Ruth. But it's still funny. That's what I think when I think of a candy bar is that fucking scene in that movie. Yeah, I'm loaded, people. I apologize for my profanity and drunkenness on the show. But, you know, this is the shit that happens when it's payday and a Saturday night. So remember, John. Just because you're trash, it doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage canon. Yeah.